Hello, I'm Dimitri Desmit, and here is a new set of VCF networking demos focusing on the multi-location use case. Before jumping into the demos, let's start with a deeper explanation of the VCF networking benefits. VCF offers a wide range of benefits from simplicity self-service, to automation, to performance optimization, and to finally availability. However, here we're talking about the multi-location use case. And the VCF networking benefits for that use case are central management, where I will manage all my network and security services centrally from a single location for all my data centers. Best load distribution across data centers. So I can move my VMs, my workload anywhere, even across data centers, since the network is everywhere. And best availability, even in the case of data center failure. All those benefits are offered, but how are they offered? VCF networking, so the NSX component of VCF, offers a central manager called NSX Global Manager to centrally manage and operate all the data center network and security services. This NSX Global Manager pushes all the network and security configuration to the different VCF NSX local managers in the different data centers. This offers operational simplicity. Then network and security objects are, can be stretched. This guarantee consistent policy configuration and enforcement. And with those network and security objects available everywhere, then the workload VMs can be moved transparently cross location, cross data centers. And also with those network and security objects available everywhere, the workload VMs can be simply recovered and so a very simplified disaster recovery is available to VCF customers. So let's see those benefits in a lab. The lab I have has two locations, Paris and London, with each a dedicated VCF. And in terms of running application, I have a two-tier application WebDB at the beginning physically in Paris, deployed on stretched L2 network, so NSX stretch segments and NSX stretch tier 0, tier 1 routers. And I have the VCF networks advertised by VCF networking, the stretch tier 0 router, in Paris and London, but at a better cost from Paris because the stretch tier 0 router is defined as primary in Paris and secondary in London. So the external traffic enters via Paris to reach the web tier and the web tier talks to the DB tier. And in terms of security, micro segmentation, only HTTPS traffic is allowed from the outside to web, and only MySQL is allowed from web to DB. And we'll see all of this in the demo part one. Then in the demo part two, we'll see how easy it is to move a workload, a VM, a VM from one location to another, since the network and security are everywhere. And we'll see how transparent it is to application. Finally, in the demo part number three, we'll go through a full data center failure and see how simple it is to recover the applications. When a data center fails, there is actually no need to touch the physical fabric, nor the logical network. Uh, as you remember, the subnets, the networks were advertised from Paris and London at a better cost from Paris, but now only London is up. So only London is advertising those networks. So automatically, with no touch on the physical fabric, no touch on VCF, on the logical network, external clients will enter via London to reach uh, the different internal networks. And if you have an application or part of an application already running in London, then this application or this part of application will be available with no touch again on the physical fabric, nor uh, the VCF. Now, if the application is not running in London, but was running in Paris, or part of that application was running in Paris, then you need to recover that application. So those VMs, those workloads. And this is simply done and, is the, and it is the only step required for the recovery of the data center. It's the recovery of those workloads, of those VMs. And this is done by VMware Live Recovery, SRM. And now you have those very same VMs with the very same default gateway on the very same network that are running in London. And once it's recovered, external clients will enter via London as discussed. 
will access all the parts of the application and the application access will be offered and it's security as well because the network was everywhere the security was pushed everywhere so it's also in london and so in that specific case external clients will access the application via https but won't be able like, to access the application via http because it's secured by micro segmentation Okay, so we'll see all those demos, part one, part two, part three, um, just uh, just now. Okay, so this is my lab with my VCF Paris, where you can see I have two workload domains, one management and one VI. And in my VI workload domain, I have my vCenter for the compute and my NSX local manager um, for the networking. And if I go on the vCenter, Paris, you can see I have a bunch of workload, a bunch of VMs, but especially the App One two tier VMs that are in Paris. And if I go to my VCF London, same thing, I have two workloads, management and VI. And in my VI workload domain, I have my vCenter London and NSX local manager. And in vCenter, you can see I have no workload running. I have those two App One DB and App One Web One which we'll talk about in the demo part number three for the disaster recovery. But yeah, no application running. Everything is running for my app one in Paris. And so if I access it, you can see my application to app one is working. App one um, can also talk to the DB and same thing for app two. And this is because on the networking side, if I go on my global manager, NSX global manager, you can see that I have a tier zero logical router stretched between Paris and London and primary in Paris, connected to a tier one logical router stretched between Paris and London and segments web and DB uh, also stretched in Paris and London. So they are available in Paris and London in both locations and I have my security centrally configured with web HTTPS and ping allowed from the outside to the web tier, web tier to DB tier MySQL and anything else rejected. So if for instance, I want to reject my web tier talking to the DB tier on MySQL and I go back to my web two, refresh, you can see it's blocked, web one, you can see it's blocked as well. If I re-enable and it's pushed globally uh, everywhere. Uh, so now my compute is in Paris, uh, but if for whatever reason it's in London, we'll see that in the demo number two, part two and part three, uh, the security will be there as well. Uh, so here is the demo part number one, which is central configuration of the security and the networking for all my two locations. It could be more than two, obviously, but here in my lab for all my two locations, network and security centrally configured. Okay, now let's go to the part um, demo number two. So for this demo part two, we'll move one component of this two-tier uh, application the App One Web Two from my VCF Paris, my vCenter Paris, to my VCF vCenter London. But before doing that, let's validate everything is working fine. So if I go to Web Two, yes, I can access it, and Web Two can talk to DB. If I check uh, via ping, I have access to it, and if I check the path, the trace route. I enter from my external client uh, to Web2 via the tier zero slice Paris, because again, the tier zero stretched Paris London is primary in Paris. So I enter via my tier zero slice Paris to my tier one, to my Web2. So everything works fine. And now let's start the vMotion, the cross vCenter vMotion, so I have to use uh, Power CLI, which is what I'm doing here, uh, to relocate the VM. And you can see, or to vMotion, uh, the VM. And you can see the vMotion started. And let's get the ping here. 
and let's wait until uh, the end of the Vmotion. It will take uh, a couple of minutes uh, to see what happened. Here we go. The Vmotion is finished, is completed. I lost a single ping during this live cross vCenter vMotion. Uh, the only difference you can notice is now the latency is a little bit higher for my external client to Web2 because Web2 is now physically in London, as you can see here on my vCenter London. Uh, oops, sorry. You can see here it's up and running on the very same NSX um, segment, global stretched segment. And yeah, everything is working fine. I'm still entering, if I check the trace route, uh, I'm still entering via my tier zero stretched uh, slice Paris. I still enter via Paris, but I go to London because now physically app one web two is physically in London, but yeah, it's working fine. Web2 can still access, if I refresh, 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 can still access the DB. So everything is completely transparent to the application, transparent to the end user. So you can easily now move applications or part of applications from one location to another transparently, even live vMotioning motioning it. Okay, this ends the demo part number two. Now let's jump directly into the demo part number three. So for this demo part number three, I have two components of my application Web1 and DB in Paris and one component Web2 in physically in London. So everything is working fine as you can see, if I access Web1, Web1 can talk to DB. If I access Web2, Web2 can talk to DB and I can talk to Web2. Uh, I have security as well. If I want to access it via HTTP, it's spinning and not working. HTTPS, it's working. So everything is working fine. If I check also via ping, I can access my Web2 in 10 plus milliseconds and my web one in two one milliseconds. Obviously because web one is physically in Paris and web two is further along, um, further away in London. Um, and the trace route, I enter to access web two or web one, I enter via the tier zero slice Paris. Okay, so everything is working fine as we just validated. I'll get a ping running to web2 and I'll kill Paris. So for this, I have a script. I kill Paris. So when I do that, I lose completely, completely my Paris location. And as you can see, I lost one ping, but it's still working. Uh, the difference, and it's still working via ping, it's still working via uh, HTTPS, but as you can see via HTTPS, I can access Web2, but Web2 cannot talk to DB because DB is physically in Paris and Paris is dead. So access to Web2 works. Just one thing I want to highlight quick. If I do the trace route, I'm entering now via the tier zero slice London, and then the tier one Paris London, and then the Web2, where before I was entering when everything was working fine via the tier zero slice Paris. But yes, Paris died. Uh, so now I enter via the tier zero slice London as expected. And this without any human config change, human touch, whatever on the physical fabric, nor the logical network. And this is as explained, as I explained before during the lecture, because Paris and London were advertising both the networks, uh, Paris with a better cost, but then when Paris dies, London is the only, only one advertising it, so the world enters automatically with no human touch via London, as you can see here. So if I have an application running in London, it will still work, as you can see here, but if you have an application that was running in Paris or some components of that application that was running in Paris, that were running in Paris, then I need to recover them. So for this, we have VMware Live Recovery, SRM, and I have a recovery plan, as you can see, from Paris to London. And 
it's for the VMs, App1 Web and App1 DB. And as you can see in my vCenter London, which is up obviously, you can see them here with this little logo, which means those are replicated VMs uh, from the time when Paris was up. And this site recovery will recover them. So let's run this. I understand it's a disaster recovery and let's start the recovery of um, that of those two VMs and it will take a couple of minutes so let's wait for it and then I'll uh, resume the video. Okay the recovery is finished those error messages are because the location Paris is down as explained before so the SRM London cannot uh, reach out the SRM Paris but yeah that's fine it goes on and as you can see the VMs have been powered on in London and as you can see in vCenter London as well so now web 1 and web 2 and DB are running in London so if I refresh the page of page of web 2 it's working again if I go on web 1 it's working again you can see that also via the ping web 1 is working obviously it's 10 plus milliseconds because now web 1 is physically in London and the trace route is for web 1 is also going through the tier 0 slice London obviously and without touching anything on the physical fabric without touching anything on NSX recovery has been done on the network and the security is still here if I want to access web 1 via HTTP it's still not available because only HTTPS is allowed that security was pushed to Paris and London and so is also in London okay this ends the demo part three thanks for watching these three demos and now to wrap up with those demos what did we demonstrate VCF offers private cloud with full support of multi-location and the benefits of VCF in that case of multi-location are operational simplicity for data centers with central management of network and security services via NSX Global Manager, consistent policy configuration and enforcement with network and security configuration pushed to all locations, compute mobility cross data centers, and very simplified disaster recovery with not a single action needed on the physical fabric nor VCF networking. The only action was to recover the VMs via VCF live recovery SRM. Thank you and I hope to see you soon.